Hi, I'm Bob. Let's finish the last five computer exercises for Chapter 10, Basic Regression Analysis with Time Series Data in the textbook Introductory Econometrics, a Modern Approach, the seventh edition by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. Computer Exercise 10 is about a model relating the short-term interest rate to the inflation rate and the federal budget deficit. In part one, we compute the correlation between inflation and the deficit. We use the correlate command in Stata, and the correlation is 0 0.0975. It is pretty small, and it implies that there is little collinearity between inflation and deficit over the sample period. In part 2, we add the legs of inflation and deficit to the model. The long-run propensity for the effect of inflation is the sum of the coefficients on the inflation variable and its lag. It is 0 0.725, which is larger than that from equation 10.15. In the last part, we do an F-test for the joint significance of the two leg variables. The null hypothesis is that both are zero. The F-statistic is 5.22 and its p-value is 0 0.0087. We reject the null hypothesis. It suggests that the two legs are jointly significant at the 5% or even the 1% level. Let's find answers to computer exercise 11. It's about the effects of the speed limit and seatbelt laws on car accidents. California's seatbelt law took effect in 1986. The highway speed limit increased to 65 miles per hour in 1987. In Stata, we can look at the observations with the Browse command. In Part 2, we regress the log of total accidents on the monthly time trend and 11 monthly dummy variables. The estimated coefficient on the time trend is 0 0.0027. It suggests that automobile accidents increased by 0.27% per month after adjusting for seasonality. It amounts to a 3.3% increase per year on average. To test for the significance of the seasonality, we use the test command and find that the monthly dummies are jointly significant at the 1% level, suggesting the presence of the seasonal pattern. We add another four explanatory variables to the model in Part 3. The coefficient on the unemployment rate is minus 0 0.0212. The total number of accidents is expected to drop by 2.12% if the unemployment rate increases by one percentage point above its time trend, holding seasonality and other variables in the model fixed. It is statistically different from zero at the 1% level. 
It makes sense because a higher unemployment rate implies fewer people driving on the road and lower automobile accidents. We need to interpret the coefficients on the two law dummy variables in Part Four. The coefficient on the speed limit law variable is minus zero point zero five four. It means the speed limit law decreases road accidents by five point four percent on average after controlling for the time trend, seasonality, and other variables in the model. It makes sense because a lower speed gives drivers more time to respond to potential accidents. The coefficient on the Seabell law is zero point zero nine five. It implies that. The Seabell law increases accidents by 9.5 percent, holding other factors constant. It also makes sense because drivers may drive less carefully, thinking that they become safer with seatbelts. The Seabell law is intended to save lives rather than prevent accidents. For Park Five. The sample average is 0.89, meaning that around 0.89 percent of accidents involve at least one fatality. We use the variable as the outcome variable in Park Six. The speed limit law increases the fatal accident percentage by 0.07 points. Which is small. The Seabell law effect becomes negative. It reduces the fatality rate by 0.03 percentage points, but the effect is not statistically significant at the 10 percent level. Let's go to computer exercise 12. It is about the static Felix curve. The dataset Felix does not contain data for years after 2003. We need to construct a dataset for annual inflation and unemployment rates after 2003. We can look it up on the FLED website. I built a dataset named Felix 2 DTA that contains data on inflation and unemployment from 1948 to 2000. And twenty-two, you can download it from the link below. When I use the data from 1948 to 2006, I get results similar to equation 10.14 in the textbook. When I use all 75 observations in the dataset, I obtain the following equation. The slope coefficient is no longer statistically significant at any reasonable level. The extra years from 2007 to 2022 do not help obtain an estimated trade-off between inflation and unemployment rate in the static model. The estimate is still positive, though insignificant. In Part Three. We only use the data from 2007 to 2017. The slope coefficient estimate becomes negative, implying a trade-off between unemployment and inflation. But the effect is not statistically different from zero at any conventional level, with a p-value of 0.6. For the last part, we cannot establish the relationship between the estimate from the entire sample and the estimates from the subsamples. The weighted average of the slope estimates is 
zero point three one. It is very different from the slope estimate for the entire sample, zero point one five. Let's do computer exercise thirteen. It is about the minimum wage. In part one, we run the regression of the growth in the average wage on the growth in the minimum wage and the growth in the CPI. The coefficient on the minimum wage growth rate is 0.151. It means that the average wage growth rate increases by 1.5 percentage points. If the federal minimum wage growth rate increases by 10 percentage points, it is statistically significant at the 1 percent level, with a t-statistic of 15.59. Impact two. We add the legs from one to twelve of the minimum wage growth rate to the model. The F statistic for the joint significance of the twelve leg variables is one point seven two, and its p-value is zero point zero five eight. It is statistically significant at the ten percent level. The long-run propensity is 0.198, that is higher than the one from the static model. In part three, we regress the employment growth rate on the minimum wage and CPI growth rates. Minimum wage growth appears not to have a contemporaneous effect on the employment growth in this sector. The coefficient is not statistically from zero at any conventional level with a p-value of zero point nine. In part four, we add twelve leg minimum wage growth to the model. The contemporaneous effect is not significant because the t statistic for the minimum wage growth in time t is tiny, and its p-value is 0.85. The long-run effect is not significant either because the f statistic is also small and its p-value is 0.44. The growth in the minimum wage does not have a statistically significant effect. On employment growth, either in the short or long run. Let's complete the last computer exercise. It is about the public view of the U.S. president's job performance at a particular point in time. The range of the variable approved is from 30.94 to 88.65. With a sample average of fifty-three point five eight. In part two, we regress the approval rate on the log of CPI for food, the log of real gas price, and the unemployment rate. The estimated equation is as follows. The coefficient on the log of CPI for food is minus 115.19. The presidential approval rate is estimated to drop by 11.5 percentage points when the CPI for food increases by 10 percent, holding the gas price and unemployment rate fixed. The effect is statistically significant at the one percent level. Against a two-sided alternative, the coefficient on the log of real gas price is minus 33.12. It implies that the approval rate decreases by 3.3 points if the gas price 
increases by 10%, other things equal. The Fed is also significant at any reasonable level. The coefficient on the unemployment rate is 0.727, suggesting that the approval rate will increase when the unemployment rate rises. It is unexpected but not statistically different from zero at any conventional significance level with a t-statistic of In part 4, we add the two dummy variables to the model. The terrorist attack variable increases the president's approval rate by 21.5 points, holding the other variables in the model fixed. The effect is statistically significant at the 1% level. The Iraq invasion also raises the approval rate, but it is not statistically different from zero at the 10% level against a two-sided alternative after controlling for the other variables in the model. For part 5, we can compare the estimates from the two models using the STAP command. The estimates of the CPI and gas price variables do not change much. The positive unemployment effect becomes more significant, which is hard to rationalize. We add the S&P 500 index to the model in the last part. After controlling for the other five explanatory variables, we find that the stock market performance does not have a statistically significant effect on the presidential approval rating with a t-statistic of 0.18 and a p-value of 0.86. Thank you very much for solving all the computer exercises with me. See you soon in the next chapter. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.